morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. First up today, we are celebrating National Video Games Day with a fun look back at Seattle's connection to the gaming industry. We welcome from the Seattle Retro Gaming Expo, Robert Schmuck. It's good to have you here. Good to have you Thank here. you. I've been Thanks. looking at all of this and kind of, um, you know, reliving in my mind the beginning of the games. Let's talk about what you brought and some of the basic things that some of, the, some of us remember. Yeah, so I brought um, this Atari 400 from 1979, which is a uh, you know kind of Atari's 8-bit uh, you know computing era, really getting into 8-bit video games. Um, and so a very popular computer. Atari released uh, you know a few models in this line. And so, how much did this cost when this was being sold? Um, so you know these came out at relatively modest at that time, a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with judging for inflation, they're not as <laughs> not as inexpensive as computing today. Right. This is very interesting. We were just talking about this. What is this? Yeah, so the legend was in uh, the you know mid '80s, the video game market crashed. So in 1983, there was a proliferation of manufacturers making video game consoles, kind of riding this wave of popularity. Uh, the Vectrex is one sitting next to this here. One. So uh, this came out in 1983, and the goal was is to get students uh, and you know you know children to not use the family TV. So they released this console right at the cr market crashes in 1983. It does a failure. Atari had much the same thing, and so they had warehouses full of Atari 2600 games and beyond and so their solution was to take everything out into the desert in Almogordo New Mexico and dump it good grief because <laughs> they didn't want to pay to store it anymore. they didn't want to pay to store it and why would they bury it in the desert so so how did we find this out um, so this was an urban legend for many years um, we you know, I remember we thought I, I remember growing up and hearing about this and uh, when I started collecting uh, games in the mid 2000s um, or in early 2000s um, you know this this was kind of the urban legend and then in uh, 2012 a production company decided to finally see if it was true um, and they actually went out and um, were able to dig up the games and made a movie uh, on that that experience that is remarkable. Now, does Seattle have any connection to these early things? Um, I mean, not not quite that early. So, what, tell us again what this thing is. Uh, so this is a Vectrex. Um, so it's a vector so it's graphics. Like, let mom and dad watch the TV. You can play. You can game play. Over here. Uh, you know, on your own screen, <laughs> not tie up. So and there's only 27 games released because it was kind of that end wow. of the video game crash uh, when the market failed. Does this one still work? And why did the market fail? Um, so the, the market failed just because there was, uh, you know, uh, like a uh, Pong. We were talking about Pong before, mm -hmm. you know, one of the earliest video games that we yep. think of uh, before that. Um, and, you know, companies were just releasing essentially the same games with different formats. So you had maybe two-player hockey and four-player hockey um, and then football. And these were all the same kind of games. And so uh, companies like Coleco would release, you know, uh, 20 consoles in their Coleco Telstar line, and that just caused you know parents to buy things and then not really get a good experience, and so and the, the market just kind of crashes. Okay, what is this little guy? Um, so this is a uh, modern kind of recreation of Tempest, which is a great arcade game, mm -hmm. um, and so this um, actually plays. Um, you know, you can have this sitting on my desk. I have it at my desk at work. Does it work? Um, and it works fine. You it works great. It? You can I can play it, <laughs> um, and I can also go downstairs. Um, I work uh, just next door at Living Computers Museum and Labs oh, here, wow. just down the street, and we have a full arcade. Um, with Tempest in there, so I can get my fix in multiple ways. That depending sounds on the very game. fun. Um, and so this one. Yeah, so this is uh, you know the Nintendo Entertainment System. So uh, Nintendo decides you know they want to launch their video game console. They've had success in Japan, um, and so they come out as a toy company in 1985. And so they release uh, Rob the Robot, being that my name's Rob. I've always held a certain affinity uh, for Rob the Robot. Um, and so this kind of launches the video game market again. Um, they have a lot of success. Um, recently, they released the NES Classic, so you can go out and purchase those games and actually play them on your home TV. The things that you remember from playing when you were a kid. Exactly. And then the, the Game Boy, games. of course, which was like like lots of people had those. The Game Boy was very popular. It came with Tetris uh, packed in there, and it's the 35th anniversary of Tetris, which has lots of ties to Seattle. So Nintendo obviously being based here in Seattle right. um, in Redmond. Um, and then uh, Alexei Pajanov, the creator of Tetris, actually works at Microsoft, and so is local here in Seattle and has a house. That's very cool. Um, so let's look at some pictures. We have some really, really old games, because I don't know if kids remember um, what these things were like. Let's let's take a look at this one. What is this? Yeah, so this is Tennis for Two, which is essentially the first <laughs> video game. Right. Um, and so this it's is just from a thing that goes back and forth. It's Pong essentially. Yeah. Um, and so there's a small net in the middle, or you know, a blip. Um, and this is all analog. There's no digital components. So this is all at the hardware level. Um, one of the engineers um, at Living Computers Museum and Lab spent about six months and actually went back, looked at the schematics, recreated it, uh, actually fixed a few errors that he found with uh, what he thought the geometry of a tennis ball 
Hall should be. Oh, interesting. Um, and so you can go and play this game actually at the museum there and kind of see the first video game from 1958, which is so very early. Can you put spin on the ball and things like tennis would actually um, give us? In a sense. So the game doesn't play like we would think live. So you uh, kind of adjust your shot ahead of time and aim and then launch your ball and kind of see. And so it's, it's oh, a very okay. slow, I mean, this is 1958. Yes. This is when computers yes. were massive equipment um, and not necessarily people had something in their own I their remember own those early games. I worked at Sears in the sporting goods department. We sold the first Pongs and people would just stand there. Not even play it, just stand there and watch it. It was so fascinating for us at the time. What do you think the future of the gaming industry is going to be now that things are so realistic and so involving? Yeah, I think there's there's different ways. I think competitive gaming is definitely seeing a resurgence uh, with uh, eSports. So uh, the Penny, o Penny Arcade Expo was recently here in Seattle, brings uh, you know about 100,000 people in to play video games and uh, you know eSports or sports as entertainment and people watching and uh, you know famous streamers that are playing video games and kind right. of being known for that is definitely, I think, uh, one area that the industry is heading. And big money at stake for big people money. who are really good at this. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, Which is shocking. Yeah, I mean, so. it's great. I think that's, you know, a, a perfectly fantastic thing, but I, it, I just blows my mind that you can win millions of dollars. Yeah, the largest one that, I, that I'm aware of is the International, which is a, a very complex strategy team game called uh, Dota. Um, in that contest, um, the aggregate prize pool is, you know, between 25 and 30 million dollars on average. That is crazy. All yeah. right, so what's behind us here? Uh, so behind us is Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, arguably, I would say in my opinion, one of the best video games of all time. Mm -hmm. Why do people like Mario so much? Uh, so Mario is just, it's, you know, it's that kind of resurgence of video games. It's very easy to understand. Um, the first level um, in Super Mario Brothers, the first game in the series, kind of shows you how to play it without actually having any words. And so, as you know, you talk about game design and people trying to recreate old games. Mm -hmm. Mario Brothers level 1-1 one, one is kind of seen of that pinnacle of like, you know, oh, there's something in my way, I jump over it. Um, and so Mario Brothers 3 is kind of the pinnacle of that series. Ah. Um, and there's lots to do and lots to explore. Shall we try it? We could try it out. Okay. I have, I'm not a game player and not a Mario <laughs> player, so you just tried to teach me and I've, yeah. okay, I hit start. So press start, start and then you'll, you'll start the game <laughs> I there. I know I hit start. That much I'm, yeah. I'm on. Okay. We'll go so up to that first level there. Up here. Hit start again, hit, right? Uh, hit A again. Hit A. Okay. A. And then now you're in the game. So you're just going to try to right. kind of jump over that Goomba there. You can land on top of him for extra credit and get some points. There we go. 100 <laughs> points. All right. Now I'm going to try to hit these hit the blocks. Marks. There we go. So Nintendo, when they released Super Mario Brothers 3, actually decided to make a Oops. movie called The Wizard. Um, mm -hmm. When they made a fictional contest called the Nintendo World Championships to market the game. So the game is essentially, or the movie is essentially a very long commercial uh, for all of Nintendo's latest releases that year. Okay, I've goofed up so you here. Can, hang you on. can hang it, press A again and kind of jump over it there. There you go. <laughs> My thumbs are so confused. <laughs> we wait for this guy. Woo! No! <laughs> oh, we got you. <laughs> I got cocky. <laughs> That's so much fun. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. There's so many good things, um, you know, for us to play out there and these kinds of things. I think as long as I'm not shooting people, I'm pretty <laughs> happy with the game. Thank you, Robert.